what uh, I started a special care nursery in Cardinal Glenner Children's Hospital in 1963 and we were instrumental in we helped invent the ventilator we invented how to take blood pressure on premature babies we, we were the ones that invented nutrition in the vein uh, we identified the need for magnesium the need for zinc the need for copper wow. and and uh, we did it with metabolic beds we did every every intake and output and did these things so we were a leader in the field of neonatology the hospital still is a leader in the field of neonatology but then I had a baby Joseph in 1975 who had flat brain waves and was said to be brain dead mm. and uh, uh, it was suggested to stop treating him. I said, well, I don't do that. I treat babies, some live, some die, and kept treating him. And uh, he did eventually get off the ventilator, and he went to school, and he got straight A's, and ran track and played baseball. And he's married, he has three children. So because of him, after about six months, when he continued to live and was doing much better than anybody would have predicted, I started to investigate brain death, and uh, um, it, it took about two years till I understood the language of brain death. Uh, 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 brain death is is a lie. Uh, it, it's a, a, a lie that's been told over and over again, so people don't even realize it's a lie anymore. But it's been a lie from the beginning, continues to be a lie. So um, uh, I published in. In the medical literature, I have an article in the uh, in Journal of the American Medical Association. I have an uh, article in the Gonzaga Law Review. It's 85 pages. It has 244 footnotes to it. And, and uh, uh, because of that, eventually I have uh, continued to um, uh, talk about brain death. Brain death is a lie. I have talked all, all over the United States, I've, um, I've talked in many countries. The, the truth is easy, and, and then once you deviate from the truth, then you ha have, first it's this false, but then when people become conscious of it's false, then it's a lie. So brain death is a, a, is a lie. The way it occurred was that Christian Bernard did the first heart transplant in South Africa in 1967. Mm -hmm. Three days later, they did the second heart transplant, and you don't know where that is, but I'll tell you. It was done in Brooklyn, New York, and what what they did is they cut the beating heart out of a three-day-old baby and transplanted it into an 18-day-old baby. And at the end of their surgeries, a short time after the end of their surgeries, both of those babies were dead. It was illegal. It was immoral. And so they had to do something to make it legal. And so what they did is they set up a committee at Harvard and the committee invented brain death. Uh, the committee did not do studies on dogs or cats or rats. They didn't collect data on human beings. They just invented brain death. And Transplants, they have a designated requester and a designated requester is usually a very nice person who dresses nice and, and befriends the relatives. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Oh, I know this has to be terrible on you. We'll do everything we can to help you. And all of that is part of getting them indoctrinated Organ procurement. to get their, yeah, uh, to get their organs. And, See, and you cannot get any cannot get any organs from a cadaver. Every organ that's transplanted is a healthy organ, and you can only get healthy organs from living persons. You cannot get any organs for transplant from a cadaver. That's why you don't put it on your license. And the things I'm telling you is that you you are not allowed to hear, uh, it, uh, and because if you hear it, you will be upset as you, all three of you, are upset, and rightly so, you should be upset, because uh, um, whose organs do they want? They want the organs from the, uh, for, certainly from all children, but especially the people who are 16 to 30, 
and their life is in jeopardy. If they're unconscious and on a ventilator, they're going to get their organs, and they do everything to get their organs. And, and uh, once the organs are taken, you can't bring them back to life. And so that what they do is they tell the relatives, well, you, you know, your, your, your daughter Sally would really like to do something good, and this is a way to make something good out of this tragedy. And and uh, or your son, and the while they have been getting organs from uh, accidents and gunshot wounds, they now get more organs from overdose of drugs than they do from accidents and gunshot wounds combined. There are eight deaths a day from overdose in Ohio, and and they they get their organs is, is what they want. And, and so what are they doing? They're giving the policeen the Narcan to counteract the drug which gets them into the emergency room, but it doesn't save their life. It gets them in the emergency room and they still get their organs. And so so diabolically disgusting. Oh, it really is. See it's so bad. And it's making sense. Oh my gosh. It's making sense. Yeah. Now use the part of part of why. I, um, uh, when you were on talking about unconscious and pain, and you might have talked about something else, what I'm encouraging you to do is to realize that that th there are common denominators of all of this. The common denominator is that each person is unique and unrepeatable and special, and a person is is alive. Uh, uh, but uh, so are the dogs and cats running around that are alive, and so are the trees alive, but they don't have the life that the person has, and each person has that life, whether that person can walk or talk or show consciousness. In brain death, they, they do only three things for brain death. One is the, the patient does not show consciousness. The patient does not have brainstem reflexes that that involve the eye or the ear. So there's about 14 brainstem reflexes, but they test only six. They don't test the others. And then the, the test that they do that uh, is called the apnea test. It's really not a test, it's a procedure. And what they do is take the ventilator away uh, for 10 minutes and the patient has to demonstrate that they can take a breath in that 10 minutes, or that becomes the signal to cut out their organs. During the time they're off the ventilator, the carbon dioxide builds up, the acids build up, that makes the brain swell worse and makes them get worse. So everybody must learn to not do an apnea test. You almost learn it now. And, and you have to know it. I hope you never have to use it on your relatives, but you need to learn it. Do not do an apnea test. No one should ever have the procedure of an apnea test. And then uh, you, you ha have to know that the overdose of drugs, they need time to heal. You know, right now, and I got a text as I was coming in from the father of a girl in Canada, Takesha, uh, McKitty, you, you can Google her if you want, Takesha McKitty. Uh, uh, um, I, was, I, gave, I was talking in New York and I was going to New Jersey the next day and they called me and asked me if I would um, um, help with Takesha, so I went to Canada to help her. Uh, uh, she overdosed on September the 14th. On September the 20th, they issued a death certificate on her. Uh, she's still very much alive. She moves her feet. She moves her legs. Uh, you know, and, I mean, I could. But she has a death certificate. She has a death certificate. She has a death certificate on September the twentieth, and th this is uh, uh, December the fifth. You know, she's still alive. She's still alive. Yes, but With they. The death certificate. But she could have had her organs cut out on September the twentieth, but by going sure. there, put a stop to that. So she was not dissected. Every. Everybody who um, who has their organs taken, they're all dissected alive. There's no organs you can get from a cadaver. 